The Caspier is undoubtedly the vehicle that determines the standards of modern mine-resistant ambush-protected aka AMRAP class vehicles. Although it is now older than 40 years, it is still among the best. Today, we are investigating the Caspier, an undying South African legend. The Caspier was designed not for the South African Defence Force, but the South African Police shortly SAP. So it takes its name from the anagram of the abbreviations of the customer, the SAP, and the design authority, the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, shortly CSIR. However, this vehicle was so successful that the South African Defence Force, or SADF, also took it to its service. Before we move on, we would like to thank Dr. Dewal Finther, who allowed us to use some information from his book South African Armored Fighting Vehicles, A History of Innovation and Excellence and his article on the Tank Encyclopedia website. A senior officer of the SAP security branch, Hans Dreyer, who had served in the Rhodesian Bush War, had found a chance to observe the highly effective tactics of the Salus Scouts unit of the Rhodesian security forces. When the South West Africa police formed the counterinsurgency branch, referred as Kufut in 1979, he was appointed to lead it. Dreyer directly patterned the Kufut after the Salus scouts. The primary task was to perform long patrols in the key regions to prevent a possible infiltration and destroy the forward camps. Secondly, the Kufut units would follow the insurgent groups who managed to infiltrate and destroy them no matter how long it took. But the vehicles used by the SAP at that time, like the Hippo, were unsuitable for such missions. Luckily, the Defense Research Unit of the CSIR had been working on a new type of mine-protected vehicle concept with a monocoque hull since 1977. Initially, they integrated a monocoque hull on a hippo body. This new variant, called Crocodile, was unsuccessful and the project was terminated shortly after. The base vehicle Hippo had a low off-road capability. Besides, it had been made from Bedford truck parts, which were unreliable and insufficient. The attempt to install a Unimog 352 engine had been unsuccessful. Even though these projects failed, the monocoque hull design was promising. The second prototype, called Flossy, was produced in 1978 with Mercedes-Benz commercial truck components, which led to the development of the Winkels Mark I armored ambulance, the first monocoque mine-protected vehicle to be taken into service by the SADF. These experiences helped the creation of the Caspier, which would perfectly fulfill the requirements of the newly formed Kufut. It was a vehicle based on the Mercedes-Benz LA111342, not a Bedford truck. The prototype of the Caspier was completed in 1979. After the vehicle completed the trial successfully, the SAP ordered 140 Caspiers in 1980. The first vehicles were designated as Mark I, which were produced by the CSIR, today's Mechem. Based on the user feedback, the Caspier was constantly improved. In 1981, TFM took over the production of the vehicle. The TFM-made Caspiers were redesignated as Mark II. The most apparent change in the Mark II was that the escape hatch located on the left side was removed. In 1982, the South West African Territorial Force decided to reorganize its 101st Battalion to perform similar missions as the Kufut did. Initially, the 901st and 903rd companies of the battalion were converted to reaction forces, commonly known as the Reaxi Mach. Later, the 902nd and 904th companies were also recognized for this mission. As a natural consequence for this transformation, the SADF decided to take the Caspier Mark IIs into the service. Still, the Army's requirements were higher than the SAP. So, the Mark III variant was introduced soon. This version had a thicker V-shaped hull, larger tires and a different engine. The Mark III standard also included structural alterations for improved mobility with more robust axles. The production of the Caspier ceased in 1994. But the story does not end. The modernization and modification of the existing vehicle have continued. For example, the Caspier Mark II CI variant was fitted with an upgraded Tata driveline system 
and the 157 horsepower Tata 697 TC diesel engine. Also, in 2010, Macam relaunched the production and introduced the Caspier 4 variant. One year later, the company unveiled the 6x6 Caspier Mark VI version based on the Russian Ural 4320 truck with the 230 horsepower Yams 236 and E2 turbocharged engine. The Caspier and G2000 variant is still one of the leading competitors in the AMRAP market. It has three sub variants the Mercedes Benz based Caspier and G2000A, the Powerstar North Benz based Caspier 2000B, and Sino Track Military based Caspier 2000C. The Caspier was developed to intercept insurgent groups from Angola or track and destroy them inside Angola. But surprisingly, this country became one of the recent customers of the vehicle. In 2013, Angola ordered 45 Caspier 2000Bs. Other than these baseline models, the Caspier has many mission specialized variants. The Kufut, which conducted long range patrols, chases, and raids, required the logistic support version of the vehicle. So, TFM developed and produced the Blessbok freighter with 5 tons cargo carrying capacity the Diker tanker with 5,000 liters diesel fuel tank and the Hamspoke recovery vehicle. But the SADF, which already owned its own logistic support vehicles, did not prefer them. The Plofada is the Caspier variant with the containerized Plofada 160AT rocket-propelled mine clearing system. Also, some vehicles are equipped with several different mine detection systems. Caspier's mine protection capacity is so high that MECAM uses vehicles fitted with steel wheels to clear anti-personnel mines in international humanitarian missions. The Caspier also has a weapon carrier with 106mm M40 recoilless gun, a mortar carrier with 81mm mortar, an ambulance, an internal security, an artillery fire control, and Hransat psychological warfare variants. The unique sub-variants of the latest Angolan Caspier 2000Bs are the 6x6 Elan recovery vehicle and water tanker. Also, Mechem delivered a weapon carrier model with the 23mm ZU-23-2 anti-aircraft gun to this country. The non-serial Caspier was a 6x4 variant of the vehicle with a forward sacrificial axle and an extended nose. The main idea in this model was to keep the vehicle mobile even when the front wheels detonated a landmine but the result was not satisfactory. The Caspier has a modular layout which makes maintenance easier. Also, thanks to this design, many automotive parts and subsystems have easily been changed for better performance and sustainability. Since they have easy to reach positions, maintenance and repair of the Caspier can be performed in field conditions effortlessly. It is an essential capability for an MRAP which has a high risk of being damaged during an operation. The troops and crew enter and leave via two power-assisted doors in the rear, controlled by the driver. There are also six hatches on the roof. The early models of the Caspier had two impeller fans to ventilate the crew compartment and keep the onboard equipment cool. But since they were insufficient for the job, especially during summer, roof hatches were generally kept open. The later versions of the vehicle are often fitted with air conditioning systems. Because it was designed for long-range operations which can last 5-7 to seven days, the Caspier has a 200-liter drinking water tank. The internal security variant of the Caspier features larger bulletproof side windows with fixed grills against rocks. The grill on the windscreen can be pneumatically raised to increase visibility. The front buffer can be lowered by the driver to bulldoze barricades and other obstructions. A wire cutter can also be mounted on the roof if demanded. For a high 4x4 wheeled vehicle, the Caspier is considerably stable and has superior off-road mobility. Its semi-elliptic leaf springs on the front and rear axles allow for a great degree of deflecting. There are check straps to counter the axle rebound and improve stability. The strengthened front design gives the vehicle bush braking capability. The V-shaped monocoque hull design of the Caspier is of all-welded steel and can withstand 7.62mm rounds and shell splinters. The monocoque hull design reduces production costs, increases durability against the blast effect and provides space efficiency. Unlike the previous Buffel, the fuel tank and engine are inside the armored hull which protects them from landmine blasts, thereby reducing the risk of a secondary explosion. 
The Caspier can protect its occupants against the explosion of 21 kilograms of TNT equivalent explosives under any wheel and 14 kilograms of TNT equivalent explosives under the hull. The repair time in field condition after a single anti-tank mine explosion are between 1 to 2 hours. But multiple detonation of mines require 8 to 12 hours of repair work. The 52 mm thick bulletproof windows have the same protection level as the hull. Still, the Caspier is highly vulnerable against RPG-type anti-tank weapons. So, during the South African Bush War, 18mm thick wooden layers were installed inside the crew compartment as spall liners. The Caspier has no standard weapon, but it can be fitted with 5.56, 7.62, 12.7 or 14.5mm machine guns, grenade launchers or 20mm cannons over the commander position. There are 14 firing ports on the vehicle, 6 on each side and 1 on each rear door. Also, the Caspier has a single 7.62mm machine gun mounting on the front left window. According to 2002-2003 edition of Jane's Armor and Artillery, the Caspier Mark III variant has a two-person crew consisting of a commander gunner and driver and can carry 10 infantry. The vehicle has a length of 6.87 meters, a width of 2.5 meters and a height of 2.85 meters. Its combat weight is 12,580 kilograms. The 170 horsepower ADE 352T diesel engine provides a road speed of 90 kilometers per hour. Its range is 850 kilometers. The Caspier Mark III can negotiate 0.5 meter vertical steps and 1.6 meter trenches. Its fording capability is 1 meter. During the South African Bush War, the Caspiers were involved in more than 350 anti-tank mine detonation incidents. Hitting the anti-personnel mines was regular. Initially, they performed well in protecting their occupants. However, this success caused Swapo to start preparing more powerful traps containing more explosives. In a four and a half year period, the Caspiers fell into these traps 229 times in which 252 South Africans were injured and 12 lost their lives. Considering that the 101st Battalion alone engaged with the enemy 200 times annually, this casualty rate was actually low. The Caspier has also proved itself in India since the first day. One of two vehicles supplied for extensive trials was tested with four different mines and blast detonations and it could still be driven back to 1657 km to Bombay. Impressed by this achievement, the Indian Army has deployed the Caspiers into Kashmir and they have successfully been used in anti-terror and internal security operations since then. Today, more than 20 countries trust their Caspiers to protect their soldiers from landmines and IED attacks. After 40 years, this vehicle is still one of the best. It seems the Caspier will add new pages to its saga for a long time with its new variants. This vehicle will continue to protect its comrades and put fear in its enemies' hearts. The Caspier, the undying hero, is undisputably a true legend. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.